Okay, welcome to part two. We have the colour print round. So once again, if uh, those at home could mute yourselves and if we could have phones on silent, that'd be fantastic. Over to you, Colin. Thank you very much. We're starting off with a beautiful quality of print here. Um, one of these interior shots where you're relying purely on natural light, but you've managed to get everything seems to be well illuminated. Um, it, it can be so tricky in this kind of environment to get a, a, a good good illumination, a good sort of lighting across the whole picture space. Um, but here it's good lighting and lovely warm tones. I mean, the subject matter, you've got all this, this wood, this sort of, uh, I guess some sort of stone floor, the timbers of the roof. So all these lovely warm colors. And that's, that's the overall impression this picture gives me of a, of a warm um, environment um, and, and gorgeous lighting on it as well. Beautiful quality printing. Um, I think that's, that's really admirable. Um, and, and there's great detail throughout. It's, it's beautifully sharp throughout. Uh, I, I'm a, it's, it's a sort of photograph I'm assuming was probably taken on a tripod because it's quite difficult to get this quality handheld under those lighting conditions because you tend to have you know it probably requires if to get the quality you don't push the iso up too high um you don't want to uh you don't want a, a too slow a shutter speed handheld that would that wouldn't work obviously because you wouldn't get the, the the sharpness there so i'm guessing it's a tripod mounted shot and it's beautifully set out you've made sure everything is included you know, you've got the back of the chair you've got the bottom of this basket at the, uh, the foot of the uh, picture you know, there's nothing sort of cutting through the boundaries. You've, you've, you've thought about this very carefully. And I think that's a, a, a lovely quality printing as well. So I'm going to hold that one back, starting off the way I started off the other section. <clears throat> Chroma circles. This is quite fun. This is sort of an impressionistic picture of people having fun in the waves. And there's nothing sharp. Um, but you can still see exactly what's going on. You're still getting the, the real impression. And indeed, if anything, the sense of movement and action there sort of conveys the sense of fun and enjoyment that these people are having in the surf. So I think that's rather effective. Um, <clears throat> again, beautifully level horizon. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, yeah, the people are well spread out. This, I mean, you might argue, well, actually, it's kind of a, a picture with no center of interest it sings all over the place and, and that's true but i think there are key things which kind of attract the eye if you need that for example the figure in the center with the blue top is quite powerful and quite strong it stands out against all the others and i think it acts as a kind of a key to the others without being overbearing within the composition so you know, all the figures contribute there's again carefully thought out so there's no figure actually overlapping the edge of the picture, um, cutting through the edge of the frame. Um, so I think that's, uh, again, been beautifully well done. And it's a bit of an imaginative picture, a bit of a creative style to, to convey this, this feeling of, of um, fun and, and enjoyment in, in the surf as the waves crash around you. Sorry, I'm going to hold that one back as well. <laughs> Yolanda Wreck, Red Sea. Now this one I find particularly difficult to judge because underwater photography is quite rare in clubs. Um, I know we had one guy in our club who used to do it many years ago, but doesn't anymore. And I've been to another club where they had a, an underwater photographer who was a bit of a specialist and he produced magnificent photographs. Um, but how do I compare it against any other photograph here? I have never done anything like this. And to me, just taking a picture underwater seems to me to be a massive challenge. And if you can do that, then you deserve a prize just forgetting the picture so um i'm almost having to ignore the fact that it's underwater and just think how well does it work as a composition and i think it's really quite interesting you know you've got this wreck here um filling up the bottom right hand corner of the picture if you like and then balancing that you've got the diver looking down on it beautifully framed against a clear blue back back background so there's no again there's no overlap between the diver and the and the, the, the seabed or the wreck. So they are two separate elements within the picture which balance out the composition very well. And 
you know, the colors I find very pleasing, very natural. Um, what do I complain about? Well, the diver with his knees bent, wouldn't it, wouldn't it look nicer if they were sort of outstretched and he was flicking his legs along? I don't know. It's, uh, as I say, it's a difficult one to judge against others, but I do think it's, um, you know, apart from the technique and the specialist equipment that's required, which is obviously uh, quite admirable, I think it's, you, you put together the picture very well as, um, as well. So, um, what, what did I hold back? Oh, those two. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's going to get the top mark, but simply because it's unusual and I don't know where to position it, I'm going to hold that one back as well. It gets boring, doesn't it? <laughs> Marsh fritillary butterflies. Yeah, quite handy having them sort of facing each other and both in the same plane of focus, isn't it? So you manage to get them both beautifully sharp. And uh, yeah, it's uh, and, and both on, on this, this lovely flower with a sort of, it's almost a graded color in the background, isn't it? I've got a kind of a yellowish, brownish background on the right and towards the left, it turns to a kind of a purple almost, which I think uh, is, is in itself quite attractive. Now, I don't know how that's been created, um, whether it's a natural background or whether it's something you produced yourself uh, behind these these butterflies, but certainly very well captured, a great example of this kind of photography. And just the fact that you've got the two of them beautifully focused facing each other, um, side on so that you know, they're in the plane of focus. I think that's an excellent example of this sort of work. Um, so that is going to be an 18. Sophia Spurgeon. Snowden. No, no. Sorry, no. I, need, I need to understand the title again. <laughs> what was the title? Oh, so I have. Yes. Hello. <laughs> it's the one on the table, I think. Oh, we're around there now, yes. Okay. Okay. Let's start again. The screen matches the print so, now. Snowden. Thank you. <laughs> Now I now I I can hear the title because it makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, um, <clears throat> one of those days when you don't get much of a view, but it's still fun to be up in the mountains because it's almost sort of mysterious. We've got the mist swirling around, and um, uh, you know the, the things that are close to you look very bold and dark, and the more distant scenes, which you can see in the background, are kind of faded and 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 uh, yeah misty because you know, they, they, they lose their color they lose their definition <clears throat> and um it's a, a quite clever use here of the the stone on the left um mountain scenes like this can be beautiful but kind of samey you know um but here you've you've deliberately introduced this quite bold thrusting element on the left hand side um, to fill in what would otherwise presumably be a, a fairly empty gap beyond this hill on the right. Uh, and I think as in terms of using what you have in front of you, I think you've done quite well to see the opportunity to create a balance to the composition uh, and, and make quite a strong, bold image. There's some quite dark tones on the print. Again, I, I kept on glancing across to the screen and I can see that... Uh, you can actually see more detail in the shadows there. Um, it, looking at the print, which is obviously what I'm judging tonight, um, it is quite dark. There is detail in the shadows, so that's not, not a problem, but I do wonder whether it's just a little heavy maybe, um, and just lifting it a bit might have made it uh, um, slightly more attractive. But on the other hand, what you are creating there is this dark mood, this, 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 this mystery, if you like, of, of the, uh, the hilltops and with the, the mist and the cloud around. Uh, and I think it does create that atmosphere quite well. It's certainly better than the image I can see on the screen over there, which is quite bright. Um, 17. Redmere Falls. 
some lovely swirling patterns in the water there, which is really very attractive. Um, <clears throat> and in a fairly slow shutter speed, so you've got this sort of milky white effect of the water uh, behind, the waterfalls behind. Choice of shutter speed on waterfalls is a purely personal thing. There is no right or wrong shutter speed, um, no matter what some people say. Um, and, you know, you just choose the, the speed to create the effects that you want in this particular picture. And here you've gone for slower shutter speed, so the falls in the background are quite milky. And I think probably the, the swirls of water have kind of merged a little bit in the foreground as well. So you have quite a soft, um, milky effect on the water throughout. And I find that quite pleasant, quite appropriate. Uh, the rocks themselves, some lovely shapes, lovely textures, lovely details on them as well. Um, I do find, again, the print a little dark, particularly on the left-hand side. This bottom left-hand corner um, goes almost to pure black. Uh, and I think because that's quite, quite a large on the print um, with no detail in it at all, I find that a little unfortunate, not very helpful in the composition. Um, and indeed, it, the top left-hand corner is dark as well. I don't know whether you've applied sort of a vignette on one side, um, but we are losing some of the detail in the, the shrubbery at the top left, and as I say, in the water at the bottom left, which is unfortunate. But it's a very pleasant scene. Um, I think overall that one's going to get a 16. Perseid shower. Ah, that's what it is there. Uh, you can weigh up again. <laughs> Fine. Okay, thank you. Well done. <clears throat> Ah, that's what it is. Okay, I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Not the easiest thing to photograph either. And, and to catch the, the shooting star in the middle of it is, is brilliant because you, know, you can't predict when that's going to happen. So unless it's a, you know, I, well, I can guess that maybe it's a long exposure um, because the, so that, those background stars and, and then the, the, um, the, the colors you've got in the sky there are going to be very, very subdued. So it may well be quite a long exposure in order to bring those out. And during that period, uh, you've been fortunate and you've got the shooting star um, crossing the image. So uh, quite cleverly done. Um, tricky with this kind of astrophotography, do you just photograph the sky? And has that got enough interest in it? Or do you try and show it against the foreground um, of maybe trees or buildings or whatever, just to give it some context. Um, I think what I like about this is the colors that have come out, those sort of purples, uh, particularly make it very attractive. Um, but is it, apart from being very clever at actually capturing the person shower <clears throat> and actually capturing one of these um, shooting stars, um, I don't think as an overall picture, it's necessarily that, that strong. Um, so, you know, I've got to recognize that you've achieved something that's quite difficult, but I'm not sure the overall, as a picture in itself, it's, it's necessarily that great. So that one is going to be a 15. Hoverfly on Thistle. <laughs> Yeah, uh, again, two of them in the same picture on the same flower, that's good. Um, the one on the right is kindly posed sideways on, so that virtually all of it is in focus. The one on the left is uh, facing you, so the, the, the sort of tail end and the wings are, are soft, they're beyond the depth of field. But quite cleverly, the head and the eyes seem to be in the same plane of focus as the other one, so uh, that, that bit is sharp. So that, that's worked quite well, quite fortunate. Um, Again, as I say, I always admire people who can photograph these things at all because I never even see them, never mind getting a camera near them. But, um, but I think that's a very competent photograph. I like the background. It looks natural. It's got a bit of variation in it, so it's not too plain. Too, it's got a little bit of interest, but equally it's unobtrusive. It's not interfering at all with the picture. It's not dragging my eye away from the main subject. So I think that's done pretty well. Uh, that's going to be a 17. <coughs> Love's dream. This first dance or something like that, it looks like it could be. It's a, it's, it's a lovely moment, isn't it? And it's one you know, we all like to capture if we're 
going to a wedding or whatever. Um, but I have to say, I, I do have a problem with this. It, it, you know, you can see the figures themselves aren't sharp. Um, um, the background is reasonably sharp, so I think it's their movement, not lack of focus. So you presented it tonight is, is in the competition, so I take it that this is a deliberate act. So you're trying to convey something with this movement. It's not just an accident. Um, we can see the moment. It's a lovely moment captured. And is the movement supposed to convey something about their, I don't know, moving together or I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to trying to work out what it is you're trying to convey to me with this picture. And I, it's not really working for me, I'm afraid. Um, it's normally when you see a picture like this, the, the, the couple will be pin sharp. And that's what I would normally expect. So you're obviously trying to do something else. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's not an accident. You're trying to do something else with this. And I'm afraid that the message isn't getting across to me. So I have to say, uh, technically, I think it's, it's not working. As a composition, it's also quite tricky because this, this railing on the right-hand side, I find quite prominent. It's a very strong design, that geometric design. And again, it's, it's, it's too prominent a part of the image to my eye, I'm afraid. Um, now, whether you could have moved around to a different position and got the couple against a better background, the background on the left looks to me perhaps a little easier on the eye if you could have moved around so the, the um, if you moved around to the right, if you see what I mean, so that the, uh, the couple would be against that background on the left, maybe that would work better. Um, Sorry, but for me, that's not working. That's a 14. Pin mill. Yeah, old wrecked boats are always a source of interest. I mean, any, anything that's dilapidated and worn out and falling apart seems to attract us as photographers. Um, I don't know why, but it is, it is interesting. It, it, is, it does make for attractive pictures. And I think... I, I like the variety of shapes here. And yes, there's a conglomeration of them. And they, they do tend to get a bit jumbled up. But I think that's a part of the fun of it, particularly this group on the left. It's a lovely, a lovely mixture um, with the, the mast heading up towards the top left-hand corner of the picture. And then it's almost like an L-shaped design isn't it? as you come down that mast from the top and then across this little group, this little jumble of, of wrecked sunken boats. And I think that works well. Um, Again, I'm glancing across to the screen because I can see the crop on the print is different from the crop on the screen. Um, so the print is cropped more tightly. So the boat on the right hand side is cropped off, largely cropped off on the print. Um, and I'm uncomfortable with that. Uh, it's, I, I don't like things half in and half out of the picture. If you wanted it in the picture, make sure it's there. Uh, you know, when you print the picture and you mount it, make sure that it includes everything you intended. Um, <clears throat> the, the alternative, if, if for any reason uh, you can't reproduce that on the print, is perhaps to just include that group of boats on the left. But I actually think having that other secondary group on the right gives a much better balance overall to the composition. Um, so... Yeah, the crop on the print that's presented to me, and, the, and that's the picture I'm judging, isn't working so well. Otherwise, I like the textures again in the water. I think you've managed to pick that up well. Uh, good, interesting, textured sky. Um, so it's a great subject. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it has great potential. But the way the print is presented doesn't quite work. So that's a 16. Pembrokeshire. Yes, for those watching on Zoom, it's, it's a pity you can't see exactly the same image I'm looking at. Because yeah, the, you know, the projected image always looks different from a print. The, the brightness can be different. The contrast can be different. Um, but it's but you can probably accept that if you're viewing from home or, or over Zoom. But it, when the actual crop, the actual image presented, is slightly different, that makes it very difficult for you. Um, so those of you here in the room, uh, you can see what I'm looking at on the print. That's a great help. Now, on this one, this is a, a delightful um, 
is it sunset or sunrise? I can't remember. Does it specify? It doesn't matter. Uh, whatever. It's a, it's a lovely image of the sun low in the sky, just peeping over this big rock, which is uh, poking out of the water, and you get a little bit of a starburst on it through probably a, quite a small aperture, creating this this lovely um, starburst effect, which I think is is quite effective. It's quite a it's quite a reasonable starburst. Um, and um, what, what I do like is the way the sun's reflecting off, I think it's just damp sand here in, in the foreground, or it might be a little bit of water, shallow water perhaps. There's a nice reflection off there, which is, uh, lifts the center of the picture, and, and again, attracts the eye towards that area. The, the rock on the bottom left on the print is almost pure black. There's no detail in that at all. And again, it's a large part of the image. So it's a bit uncomfortable to have that much of the image just blocked out in pure black with no information because um, it's occupying a large section of it. Again, I'm going to have to peek across the screen because I can see that there probably is some information in the file. Um, so maybe you could pull a little bit up there because um, it's really blocking my way into the rest of the picture. <clears throat> love the sky. Love the, you know, it's, it's one of those skies where you've got lots of clouds picking up the color of the, that low sun. And I think that's great. Um, you've included quite a lot of sky there. Um, that's a matter of personal choice. You don't doesn't need as much as that, but if that's the way you want to present it, that's fine. Um, uh, equally, if you decided to cut off a little bit at the top, um, so you still had the dark cloud at the top, but not so much of it. Maybe just on the print, it would be you know an inch or two. Um, that would be acceptable as well. But that's purely a matter of personal taste and choice, and I. I, I I wouldn't mark it up or down on that tonight. Um, yeah, the the print is quite dark, but you know it's that time of day, um, and you have got the highlights on the rocks down here, and as I say, in that reflection on the wet sand. So that's quite effective and quite enjoyable. Um, that will be a seventeen. Hornum. Lovely, rich blue colours in the water here, almost unbelievably blue, particularly when I look at the sky above, which is very pale, almost white. Is that real or have you up the saturation on the water, I wonder? It, it looks that, uh, I mean, I, I love the colour, but it, it actually feels a little unnatural. It's too deep blue. Um, and, um, and, and yes, you know, the water, the reflection in the water will always be darker than the sky it's reflecting, I accept that. But that does seem to be an excessive difference, but okay. Um, other than that, yeah, the, I, it, it's a pleasant image of, of the scene. Um, you know, the, the water, the shape of the water almost leads us into the picture to the boat beyond. Um, is that floating in another piece of water? Um, I'm gonna guess it is. Uh, I like the posts on the left, again, that is a kind of foil to the boat, so that's interesting. Um, and I think it's it's quite well handled. Um, you know, the uh, it's reasonably sharp throughout, uh, adequately sharp at any rate. Um, and yeah, a pleasant enough scene. The as I say, the sky is quite plain, but it's got a little bit of tone in it on the top left there. It's not just pure white, so um, that's fine. And. Uh, I quite like the angle, the height you've taken of that so that the, the two poles stick up well into the sky, well above the horizon, but you've still got the complete reflection in the water as well. So yeah, a very pleasant scene and competently photographed and that will get 17. Cosmos. It is a delightful flower, and I think it's delightfully photographed. Very simple. Um, you've got the center of the flower pin sharp, and mm, most of the petals as well. Okay, the nearest ones are a little bit soft at the edges. The farthest ones are soft, but it's it's again it's a gentle picture, isn't it? It's it's a gorgeous flower, gently presented. You know, it's curling in on the right hand side with this wonderful, almost swirly green background. Um, which kind of matches the, 
the curvature in some or reflect the curvature of the, the stem of the flower there. And uh, I think that's really rather beautifully done. It really works well. Um, yeah, I won't say any more about that. I'll hold it back, please. Common blue damselfly. Now, I'm sure I've seen a picture very, very, very similar to this in the uh, Wildlife Photographer of the Year exhibition at the Natural History Museum. And it's highly amusing, isn't it? With the absolutely perfect symmetrical with this, this thing sticking there with an eye either side of the stalk, clinging on. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, how did you get it to do that? How did you manage to photograph that? That's, you know, it's, it's, it's a dream, isn't it? To catch a pose like that, it really is. Um, I could be very picky and say, isn't it a pity that's not central as well? That's sticking out to one side, the sort of tail end of it. Uh, but that really is being picky. I mean, that's an amazing capture. Uh, it's, it's humorous as well as being you know, an excellent representation. Um, it's beautifully sharp throughout, absolutely symmetrical, uh, great background, you know, beautiful sort of uh, graded tones of green. Very good indeed. We'll hold that one back, please. Some trees are blue and square. <laughs> <laughs> well, they certainly are in this picture, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yes, presumably infrared, color infrared, um, which does produce these unusual colors, um, you know, with the blue foliage and the sort of pinky sky. Um, so let me, let me look first at the picture itself, the composition and the, the subject matter. Uh, those pruned trees are fascinating. It's a wonderful, wonderful example of a, <coughs> of what you can do in the garden if you're so inclined. Um, and um, you've got wonderful stripes on the lawn as well, which has been cut. Uh, the, the, the lighting on these trees does separate them out well from the background. So the left-hand edges are well illuminated. So um, uh, particularly that left-hand tree, it's not getting lost against the background, which was a great risk here. So the lighting has worked well for you. You've got strong shadows on the ground as well. Um, Love the texture of that wall on the right. Um, <clears throat> but looking at it otherwise, if, if this were a straight picture, how much interest, how, how excited would I be by it as a subject matter, as a composition? And I'm not sure that I'd be that thrilled by it. The trees are interesting. They're an interesting subject. You know, you go along and go along to these gardens, wherever it is, and see them. You think, oh, that's interesting. That's well done, yeah. But as a photograph, I'm not sure the composition um, is that exciting. So what you've done to try and make it different is photograph it in infrared, which produces these strange colors. Now the question is, has that been an effective addition to the composition or is it just a, a bit of fun, you know, something you've tried just for the hell of it? And uh, it's rather like, I treat it rather like filters in Photoshop, you know, where you get fancy textures and things. Great if it actually adds something to the picture. But if it hasn't added something, then I'm very doubtful about it. And I'm not totally convinced by this, I'm afraid. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, the coloration is amusing, but not necessarily helpful. And um, so I'm afraid I'm going to give that one 15. B on lavender. Yeah, um, as I say, it's never easy to capture wildlife like this, small insects like this, but this is done reasonably well. It's, um, it's, it's, the bit itself is quite small in the frame, but that's not important because you're showing it in, in context, if you like. It's right on the, the top of the bud. Um, you've got some other uh, buds as well in the shot. And again, a suitably um, natural background, again with hints of other lavender flowers in the background, so uh, it's, it's consistent throughout. Um, the lighting seems to be coming perhaps almost from the back, it's almost backlit, which is lovely on the flowers, you get the, the um, lighting shining through and picking up parts of the, uh, the petals and so on. 
Um, but it's not so great on the bee, because although uh, you've got light on the wings, so the wing's shining very brightly, the actual body of the bee, if you like, is quite dark, and there's not a lot of detail there, which is a bit of a shame. The, um, I like the, the angle at which this main uh, bud is coming in, the stalk coming in at an angle like that, that's effective. Uh, again, it gives a bit of dynamism to the composition. Um, the other flowers coming in are not so effective, particularly the one on the far right. Again, it's one of those which is sort of half in and half out. It's also not, not in focus because it's uh, further away. So it's, it's not the tidiest of compositions. I still say, though, I admire anyone who can take pictures of insects like this, and I wish I could. Um, but uh, um, yeah, it's, it's good without being um, the best. It's, you know, there's, there's room for improvement, shall we say, but keep at it because if you can get pictures and, and steadily improve them, um, you can reach the standard of some of the other images we've seen here tonight, and that would be good. Um, that one is going to be a 15. First light. Great time of day to go and take photographs. It's early, early in the morning, mist over the water, um, no strong lighting, although sometimes, of course, you get lovely colored lighting if you're looking towards the rising sun. Uh, but here, this is just gentle scene, um, looking out across the, across the lake, across the water. Um, <clears throat> and again, this mist adds this wonderful ethereal effect, doesn't it? So the background is quite soft and hazy. But the, the jetty of the front and the reeds on the, on the left-hand side there, very crisp and dark and bold. Um, so uh, it makes for a, a very pleasant, a very delightful picture. Again, just for those at home, there's a difference between the picture on the screen and the picture I'm looking at on the print. Um, the screen picture is square. The print is definitely oblong. So you don't have so much of the jetty at the bottom on the print that I'm judging. Um, um, it, it's funny because before I saw the picture on the screen, the one thing that did occur to me was maybe if we had a little bit more of that jetty in the picture, <clears throat> it would act as a better lead in to the rest of the, the image. So um, not quite sure why you presented them differently. Um, <clears throat> yes, it might have been good if the print also included a bit more of the jetty. <clears throat> but otherwise, it's a lovely scene. I think it's very well captured. It's, it's soft. It's delightful. Um, uh, so that one will have, ooh, let's give that 18. That's Matthew Bickham. Amongst the reeds. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, cute little duckling. Um, and... <laughs> Again, it's the sort of thing we probably all photograph, you know, out in the, a park or some lake somewhere, and you see the birds, particularly the young birds on the water, they always make great subjects, but it's not always easy is it, to create something that's really effective and, and, and it makes you know, an exceptional photograph. I think this has done a decent job. Um, it's quite interesting the way you've got the, the plant life and the reflections in the water, <clears throat> and the way those reflections obviously break up the shapes, that's always fun. The, the bird itself, the duckling, is, is well lit. The sun's coming um, sort of over your left shoulder by the look of it. So it's quite strongly lit. Um, uh, and that eye really shines out, which is great. And I'm glad you've got the whole of the head reflected in the water. Um, lovely as it's swimming along, too. You get this wake building up around it, don't you? that sort of wave of water in front of it and the wake leaving behind. So that, that's good. Um, you've cropped it very tightly in this letterbox format, presumably to get rid of all the other uninteresting stuff which was intruding on the composition and kind of wrecking it for you so and that's good that's a valid thing to do I'm, I'm happy with that um so i'd rate it as you know a decent picture without being exceptional um so in a composition like that like this that will have 16. footsteps in the rain I think this is quite, quite well spotted, you know, a bit of creative photography again. Um, just looking at these legs, I think they're both ladies, and uh, 
those wonderful boots on the left hand side of those platforms it's fantastic my daughter has a pair like that <laughs> amazing um but it's it's I, what's working for me here is the coloration behind the reflections the that red of hmm, a bus perhaps i don't know and but then on the right you've got the sort of bluey green could be some traffic lights or something i don't know i don't know what they are but they're good strong primary colors which leap out at you immediately and then you've got the almost silhouetted legs um in a good position so they're both separated with both both uh, ladies have uh, you know are taking a stride forward so you can see both legs separately and i think what's worked particularly well for you and perhaps a little bit of luck but it's always you know luck is always helpful is the fact the lady on the left her legs actually are either side of the reflected mm, i'm not sure they're traffic lights whatever but there's some sort of pole or something in the middle there and it's beautifully framed by her legs which i think is is a great great moment i actually find this really quite enjoyable picture it's um it's strange because it's not showing me the whole of the people um it's strange because it's not showing me where it is um but i just think it's a well captured moment and the colors and the shapes work well for me so i'll hold that one back please Nineteen sixties style selfie. <laughs> yeah. Love the clothing. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I remember the style too well, unfortunately. Uh, that's that's really fun. Um, again, you know, these the strong colours of the clothes really stand out. And it is very much the style of the nineteen sixties, of course. <clears throat> and the hairstyle as well, the makeup, everything there is it's really great. And um what's she using for the selfie oh it looks like a I don't know, it almost looks like a box of brownie i don't know what it is but it's something it's not particularly modern camera so it's great you know capturing the the idea of a 60s selfie i like that um very brightly lit but that seems appropriate for the clothing because it's very bright clothing you want to emphasize that uh, so that's that's good fun i like the expression on her face i like her pose um but uh, again i'm looking at the print and it's almost the same on the projected image. She's lost her toes. They're cut off by the mount. Um, I hope you had more of it on the image. The screen image I'm looking at as well, that's very, very tight at the bottom as well. So maybe you didn't quite frame it right in the camera. That's a shame. That's a great shame um, because those feet shouldn't be cut off. That's a shame because otherwise, I think this is a very strong and enjoyable image. Uh, good, strong lighting bring out those colors, like the pose, 17. Swan at Blackford. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is, appears to be under fairly limited lighting conditions, uh, you know, evening maybe, could be, uh, could be in the morning, but I'm thinking late in the day, and you've used some artificial light to illuminate the swan. I don't know whether you used a torch or it's flash or what, I can't tell. But the swan and the, the grass immediately around it are clearly illuminated by, not by natural available light, but by something you've added in. So it's had an interesting effect of kind of isolating the swan against the background in um, it's not in a natural way, but it's uh, it it certainly pulls the it certainly emphasizes, if you like, the the brightness and whiteness of the swan itself. Um, there's plenty of detail on the feathers there, so even though you have used light on it, you've not overexposed the feathers. In fact, you've probably got room to brighten it up a little bit further. And again, <laughs> it's it's tricky when you've got a screen right next to you presenting the same image. It's much brighter on the screen but I think probably without losing detail. So I would say the print, you could probably raise the brightness just a little bit. So the swan come, stands out a bit better and maybe so we could see a little bit more of the surroundings. I find the balance of lighting between the swan, which is quite well illuminated and the background, which is quite dull. I find that a little strange um, because it's not natural. Um, and yet you're photographing an animal in its natural environment. So um, yeah, it's you know it works it works well technically 
the swan has got a good pose for you. But uh, yeah, that balance of lighting between front and back, um, I'm not entirely comfortable with. 16. Ben. So I, I need to understand that title. Bin. Biz. Bin. 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 You really mean bin? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's what it is. I'll agree. Yeah. <laughs> so where's it been? Um, okay. This is an unusual entry in a club competition. Um, what are you trying to show me? Apart from that, that it's been, and I can see it's been. <clears throat> um, I don't see anything special about this bin compared with any other bin I've seen. I'm not a particular expert in bins, but you know, it seems fairly normal bin to me. Uh, and its location in the sort of corner by this brick wall and a window behind, some sort of metal rail behind it. Hmm. I don't, I have to confess, I don't see anything particularly special or eye-catching about it. So why have you chosen to photograph it and present it here in, in a competition? There must be something about it which, which attracted you, attracted your eye. Uh, is it a bit of rubbish that's sort of half in and half out? I'm trying to see, can't really work out what that might be, but that's interesting. Is it the little sticker on the top of the bin? I can't imagine something for a virus, so it's one of these anti-vaccines, I think. Um, but again, that's half hidden, so it can't be just that, that message you're trying to, to illustrate. So, yeah, I, I struggle a bit. It's, it's, it's certainly a record shot of the bin in its location, but I don't find any particular interest or any particular message coming across to me. So, um, you know, it's, it's competently photographed. No, no argument with that. The exposure is reasonable. The focus is sharp. But but it's a bin, and, and I don't personally find bins particularly interesting. So uh, it's an interesting one to present to me that makes it very difficult to market. But um, hmm. I, I shall just go somewhere in the middle of the road, I think, and give it a 16. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to give it. OK, that's, uh, that's uh, complete verse, and we've just got the, uh, the held backs to go through. How many have I held back in the end? Yeah, five. Well, oh, that's a reasonable number in the end. Okay. <clears throat> As I said, I find it a very pleasant picture, beautiful colors, lovely printing. Um, Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to give that 18 tonight. It's a great picture, but I think some of the others will beat it tonight. That's Helen Hooker. Like the creativity, like the impact, 19. Diane LeCant. Yeah, I think it's an effective composition, effective picture, it's good coloring, never mind the, uh, uh, the, the technique involved and the skill needed to be taking at, so that's another 19. Neil Atkins. I find that a beautiful image, um, really effective, quite simple, lovely coloration. I like the use of depth of field. Yeah, I'm going to give that 20. That's Sophia Spurgeon. And that one is just so clever, uh, brilliantly sharp, 
uh, as well as being fun that's got to be another 20. That's the end of the counts. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that concludes the um, judging. Thank you very much, Colin. Let's put the uh, mark in for that one. And I'll hand over to you uh, Thank you so much, Colin. Um, well done, everybody. Uh, some fantastic images there. Uh, I won't say any more. I'm going to pass on to Paul for a few words whilst um, Mark does the adding up. So over to you, Paul. Would you like to come and share the mic? Um, okay. Um, thank, thank you, thank you, Colin, for um, for um, judging tonight's photographs. And um, I thought um, you made a very, very valiant attempt at the start to hold them all back. Um, <laughs> um, and um, and and thank you for for really um, considered and and, and detailed feedback on on um, a very wide variety of, of of different different photographs um so thank you very much thank you thank you very much thank you paul managed to miss it Oh, that was where I held back, wasn't it? It was, yes. Yeah. Um, Steph, that was the 19. Got... All right. 19. Thank 19, you. yeah. I thought there was one in there. That was Helen Hooks.